Hi, I'm James, novice boater and full-time sea lover. I've started this channel to show how I enjoy my time on the water and what I've learned along the way, with the hope of inspiring others to get out there and give it a go themselves. But first, let's start with where it all began for me. I've lived on the UK south coast all my life. Trips to the seaside and barbecues on the beach were part of my upbringing. I always used to gaze out to sea wondering what lay beyond those sandy shores. With my dad serving in the navy, maybe it was just always in my blood to be drawn to the sea. Roll on 2020, I finally took the plunge and got my hands on my first boat, an 18 foot Mayland Fisher in need of some desperate TLC. I've since upgraded to Nacho, who you'll meet later in the video. But for now, let's talk about everything you need to get started in boating. Alongside listing this equipment, I've included the cost to purchase these items from new, so you'll have an idea on what to prioritise if working from a budget. Let's get into it. Welcome to Nacho. This is my 2006 Maxim uh, 1600 SR3. She's um, from bow to stern, uh, about 20 foot long, including the swim platform. Um, she's a bow rider. Um, I've had this boat for mm, coming up to a year soon, I think. We've had so much fun on it in the summer last year. There's a lot of things that I've learned from this boat already. The purpose of this channel is to share some of my experiences that I've learned along the way. Um, and starting off with is going to be a list of equipment that I've kind of built up over the years that have made my boating time safe and fun. Okay, so I've tried to split this up into three categories to be the most useful for you guys, which is must-haves, should-haves, and could-haves. So your must-haves are equipment that are the essentials that are needed to be on the water safely. You've also got your should-haves, which are things that you should have when you're in the water, but if you're trying to go by a bit of a budget, which you can get on the water with a budget, it isn't some you know millionaire's lifestyle that many people think it is. So I've got a list of equipment that will go in there, and I've also got your could haves, which are mostly things that will probably enhance your enjoyment on the water and just how fun it is to be on there. I mean, you don't need any of those could haves, and you'll still have a blast in the water. There's no doubt about it. But there's some things you could have in terms of equipment and tools or whatever that might make you even better. So let's get started. Ugh, my coffee's freezing. One thing I would definitely recommend is something like a Sea Start membership. So what that is, is it's equivalent to AA for the water. I actually needed to use mine the first time I took this boat, which is Nacho, out on the water, um, which is a fun story. If you have one of those memberships and you have an issue on the water, um, if it's mechanical, let's say you're at anchor, if it's, as long as there's no danger to life, you'll be able to use your Sea Start or equivalent membership. Um, to come and get repaired or, or towed to safety if, if you need to be. Another benefit of using something like Seastar is that it means you don't need to rely on the Coast Guard if it's not a life and death situation, which of course leaves them or frees up their resource to tend to urgent cases where there may be life at risk. Now, the first essential piece of equipment is of course life jackets. Now, there's lots of different types of life jackets that are good for different types of reasons. I use one of these, which is, mine's a crew saver. These will inflate once they hit the water. They have a gas canister that needs to be serviced. You should get your life jackets of this nature serviced annually. Um, but if I was to fall in the water with this one, it would self inflate. You do also get versions of these that have a toggle. I mean, these have a toggle anyway for manual use, but you have some that don't have the self inflation, but they will, if you go in the water, you can pull it and it, it will inflate. So these are good for being on the boat. If you're ever on a boat alone and you're to be knocked unconscious, you're to fall off the boat, it will self-inflate, of course, which means you're gonna keep your head above water. It will give you a chance of survival. Now, that isn't ideal, of course, if you're perhaps on a jet ski or on something where you expect to get a bit wet or potentially be in the water. What you may want is one of these, which is more of a buoyancy aid and also a crash pad vest as well. And so this will actually protect you somewhat from impact. These, of course, don't need to be inflated or these will just be buoyant in the water. They will give you a level of buoyancy. 
but depending on the type of boat you're doing, definitely 100% invest on life jackets, not just for yourself, but every member, every person who's on board of your boat, when on the water, should be with a life jacket. Just number one. Now, next up, fenders. You're definitely need to invest in a good set of fenders. Multiple purposes for these, of course. When your boat's at mooring, even if it's on a trailer, when you're coming up to side before going to get your vehicle, no matter how you decide to store your boat or use your boat, fenders are invaluable just to protect it. Protect, of course, your boat and also the key or the mooring that you're pulling up beside to. Protect other boats that you may be moored up against. And also, these are really, really valuable for just lots of different reasons. The amount of times I've been out on the water and I've needed to use a fender just to, you know, put in a, a small spot to pad an area so I don't bump into whatever it may be. They're really valuable um, and definitely have enough for the whole side of your boat uh, but also it's good to have a couple spare if you've got the storage space um, i have two or three spare in the locker that's um in the bilge of my boat underneath here which is where i also keep my anchor so definitely worth having a good set of these next up is rope now this is just as valuable of course as fenders and life jackets rope is so important on your boat and you'll never have enough rope well, I find I never have enough rope on my boat. I'm always looking for more. Now, rope, of course, is really valuable for mooring, up to keys, up to your own mooring, whether you're pulling a your boat onto a trailer, for the anchor, um, all sorts of stuff. Rope on a boat is, is ideal. Have a lot of rope. But next up, we have GPS, or charts, or Savvy Navi, for example. So what I mean by this is, a map of the water, a map of the waterways. So this is mine, this is a Garmin, which I attach to the front. Um, it disconnects, I take it off the boat just for security reasons, just so it doesn't get nicked or anything, and I keep this at home. Whenever I go out boating though, I'll bring it along, I connect it in there. Now these devices, they will tell you the depth, mine tells me the water temperature, and you'll also get some that will have charts within them, um, which will show you boyage systems, um, the waterways, kind of depths in the river and in the sea as well. You can get different charts for different areas depending on where you're doing your boating. But it's, it's again, it's an essential piece of equipment to safely navigate waterways. But there's two parts to this as well. There's also having these charts and these maps and also knowing how to understand what you're seeing and how to read them. There's no point having a piece of equipment like this that will tell you, you know, what's around you and looking at it and not knowing what you're seeing or not knowing what that means. Now these can be quite pricey. Um, if your boat is small, it doesn't have one already, if you don't have the wiring in place and it isn't in your budget to get that one sorted, to get that sorted, it is an essential thing. So I re would recommend prioritizing that above maybe something else that you're doing or planning for your boat. However, you can use other pieces of equipment. Obviously before we had electronics on boats, people used paper charts, um, but these can be of course, troublesome to use they can become out of date whereas electronic ones you can quite easily update them and also they can take up a lot of space and be quite cumbersome to use rather than the little screen that you can navigate now your third option is an app or an app on your phone now these aren't the most reliable things um, depending on which app you use I do have Savvy Navi on my phone and it is really really great there's actually been times where I've just solely used that especially in areas that I know fairly well but these these are subscription services normally I think Savvy Navi costs me around 40 50 pound for the year um, but it's another way that you can just kind of have as a backup maybe to something a bit more permanent but yeah definitely worth it next up VHF radio so some boats depending on what your boat you've got may have a, a radio already installed uh, mine doesn't so I have a handheld one which basically means I can communicate Normally with VHF radios, they say if you can see what you're trying to talk to across, you know, a few miles away perhaps, then you'll be able to communicate on the radio. But definitely something you'll need on the water. Next, flares. Again, to minimise the risk to you if something goes wrong. Now flares, definitely essential, depending on the area, area that you're boating in, um, will depend on what type of flares that you need. I have an inshore flare pack. Um, which is day or night distress signals. Um, but on the side of them, you'll see what the contents is within there. This is a watertight tube. So I've got two Aurora red hand flares and two orange hand smoke flares. They also have an expiry date. Um, so mine expire at December this year. And then I'll need to get these replaced or, or seated basically. But they're good for this season. Though. 
Right, I'm glad I decided to keep the canopies up. I don't know if you can hear it, you probably can't on my microphone, but it is now peeing down the rain. Okay, another piece of crucial safety equipment is gonna be a fire extinguisher. Again, if something goes wrong with your engine, if something goes wrong on the boat and you're out at sea, boats will catch fire. I know it seems weird being on the water and just covered in water everywhere, but they will catch fire again, which will need servicing once a year. An essential piece of equipment that is, is good to have on the boat. Another one which I'm not gonna um, bring out is an anchor, which again seems obvious, but it's a um, piece of equipment that you'll need and your boat, if you bought a boat, might not come with one. So it's something to consider. Um, different types of anchors for different purposes, again, depending on the area that you're doing your boating in, whether it's gonna be sand or rock, um, that you want to anchor up in. Uh, mine I keep again in the bilge underneath, it's big and heavy and a bit smelly because it's covered in stale seawater so I'm not going to grab it out but yeah definitely an anchor. And lastly a first aid kit. Um, now mine again isn't on the boat, I don't have it with me but you'll need a first aid kit on the boat for sure just in case anything does go wrong. I've not actually needed to use one but it's always worth having on the boat. All right so we've covered off the essentials now we're going to look at the should haves. I nearly forgot that then. So I've got a bit of a bag of goodies here. In fact, actually, I'm gonna go through this one first. So when I first started boating, I had a boat box, which sounds really sad. But basically my boat box is where I kept all my stuff that I needed to go boating. So my radio, the keys to the boat, everything I needed to go boating for the day was kept in a box. And basically what I meant was, in the morning, when I was setting off for boating, I could pack that box with everything I needed so when I got down to the boat to go off for the day, I wasn't going to forget anything. I knew where everything was and it made it so much more simple. I've since upgraded to my boat bag, which is a waterproof bag. You would have seen these ones. People use them quite often for kayaking, and paddle boarding, all sorts of water sports. They're really, really useful because they just fold up like this and then clip in. They have a little strap. Uh, a little buckle and all sorts but basically then that is water's not going to get inside there so i can put my phone my keys you know, money if i'm if i need to whatever like cash it's fine in there it's it's safe and secure i know where everything is it's not going to get out and it's not going to get wet next up on the should haves tools or a tool kit ideally so you'll never know when you're out at sea you know especially with the salt water things get stiff they get um stuck this sounds a bit weird now but basically mechanical things you might be able to sort on the water um, it's good to have some tools to be able to do that whether it's with the engine whether it's just you know i don't know the lock on the on my glove box there is it is, is a bit wonky or needs fixing having some tools a screwdriver and a little spanner or whatever um, just to be able to do that on the water it might save your day at boating it might keep you going as well so definitely worth having next up we have some sunglasses Polarized sunglasses, in fact. Oh, at least a bit wonky. From my fat head. So I nearly put these in the must-haves, in fact. The reason being, and when I say sunglasses, I do mean polarized sunglasses. They make a massive difference out on the water. The amount of glare that you get off the sea can make it really difficult to see where you're going. And there's been a number of times when I've been out at sea and I've nearly hit um, a buoy from a crab pot, a lobster pot, or something like that, they can be really difficult to see, especially when there's a bit of sun and a bit of glare. And they kind of pop out of nowhere at the last second. So a really good pair of Polaroid sunglasses not only makes you look cool, but it could potentially save your propeller, it could, you know, stop you hitting something, uh, and also protect your eyes. It gets really bright, as I say, out on the water, and it's good to just keep your eyeballs safe. What else have we got in my big bag? Okay, next we have spare fuel. Now this, I kind of, I guess, depends on the size of your boat. If you've got a massive boat, which costs you like a thousand pounds to fill up, then you might not take, you know, fuel with you. Or maybe you will, I don't know. It's not gonna be a bad idea, but if you've got a boat that has a thousand liters of fuel, this isn't gonna make a massive difference on more than a thousand liters. The jerry can I use typically, I didn't bring it out with me. This is just an old plastic one that I've got. I have a, is it two gallon? I think two gallon red, I don't know why the colour matters, metal one. It withstands being knocked about a lot more, it's got a better seal on it I feel, so, uh, and a proper valve as well, so the smell doesn't get out, or the, that, that smelly fuel doesn't get out um, into the air, into the car when I take it down, or even in the boat when I'm storing. 
but a bit of spare fuel um, whenever you're going out boating is always just a good peace of mind because you never know how much fuel you're going to use. And not like a car where you can kind of say, right, I've got 20 quid's worth of fuel in my car. If I drive um, and don't hit traffic, then I'll make it this far. With boating, because the wind, the tide, of course, the speed that you're going, how much throttle you're putting into it, how well you're on the plane, all these things impact your fuel usage and your efficiency. Um, and it can be very hard to gauge sometimes and you can easily get caught out. So always having a good amount of fuel in the boat and some spare if needed. Oh, and also never forget a funnel. I do have a proper funnel on the boat. This is just something, an old milk bottle that's attached to this one. But just remember like, you're having to manually pour this into the into the tank a lot of the times. Um, so having something you can do that with attached to it or within the boat somewhere that you know is a good idea too. Okay, next we have this weird looking device. But this thing is a lifesaver at times. So this is a boat hook. And you've probably seen these either on the water um, or being used in and around. But they're really valuable. So they, I don't have much space to do this, but they literally twist and go like telescopic, really long, then you twist it again and that's fixed in place. So the benefit of these, of course, is coming up to your mooring, if you're trying to hook onto uh, a buoy, if you're trying to hook up to the quay side, this allows you to stand on the boat rather than leaning over and potentially falling or struggling to get hold of something, you're able just to pick it up, pick up the rope, pick up the, the marker, whatever you're trying to get hold of, uh, bring it in and bring yourself in. These are also good if you do have a man overboard, a man overboard situation, because again, you can put one of these out, um, they can grab onto that pole, and you can help bring them in. So, really useful bit of kit. I'm slowly getting on a big pile of just boat stuff here. I'm looking forward to cleaning this up. Not. Okay, next we have a paddle or an oar. So this is just one off uh, a paddle board that I use but I do have like a proper oar over there. This is obviously just a section of it, it's not the full thing. But these are really, really valuable to have from a safety point of view too. If you do have an engine issue and you need to just change the direction of your bow so you're not side onto waves or, or even try and paddle back to shore, that is a possibility if you know, you've got the right circumstances. Um, it can be sometimes just something to just keep you moving in the right direction if you have an engine issue or a steering issue as well. If you do have some throttle, and you're able to get your propeller going, but you don't have steering, maybe your steering cable snapped or, or something, you can use these, obviously, stuck into the side of the water to just navigate the boat. So again, it's a last ditch attempt, or a last resort, sorry, but having one of these on the boat, a valuable piece of equipment, just in case that happens. So I know what you might be thinking, we've already seen this rope. However, my point here is that you should have spare rope as well. I mentioned, you can never have enough rope on the boat, or I always seem to be running out of rope on the boat, but <laughs> having spare rope, have the rope that you feel you need for every situation, um, and then maybe one or two extra, because you're I'm always running out of rope. With my mooring, I have three individual bits of rope that never leave my mooring, so I, I leave those attached to the mooring, and then I tie my boat up to it when I go off for the day or go out boating. Those stay on the mooring, and I have separate rope that then stays on the boat. So if I'm gonna to go to, I don't know, Isle of Wight for the day, and I wanna uh, tie up to their to their moorings, I have my own rope to do that, which is separate to, to the ones I have on my own moorings. So yeah, definitely, definitely worth having spare rope as well. Uh, and the last one on this list is a spare anchor. So I mentioned you've got obviously your main anchor, which will be your daily use anchor, but also having a spare one, a backup one, Normally your spare anchor wouldn't be as big as your main one, but it's definitely worth having a spare one just in case your current anchor got stuck, you couldn't pull it up. If you had to, this is again a last resort, you don't want to leave any kind of rubbish or waste or or anything that you've brought onto the water in the water. But if you had to cut loose your anchor uh, and let it on the, stay on the seabed, you're then without an anchor. And if you run into trouble, if you're having issues anyway, if the weather turns and you need it just to put your anchor down, kind of think of your anchor as your handbrake. So if something goes wrong in the car, what do you do? You stop the car, pull the handbrake up, assess the situation uh, and go from there. So if you're without an anchor on the water and things have already gone wrong, it's not a great situation. So I do have another anchor in the bow, which is slightly smaller than the one I would normally use, just in case that ever happens. So again, definitely worth having. Last, but by no means least, we have our could haves. And these are the things that are just gonna kind of make that, that experience on the boat a bit more enjoyable and a bit more fun. So first, if your boat doesn't have speakers, or like mine, 
has speakers, but they don't work, then you'll need a speaker. Being out on the water at anchor with a bit of music playing, just chilling out, or even just kind of going at speed with, the, with your ACDC blast and weather, whatever it may be, it's, it's just a, such a great feeling. Um, it makes all that pain of you know getting the boat running or, or working on the boat, cleaning the boat, doing all those maintenance things that you need to do, it makes it all worth it when you're blasting at 30 knots with a sunset behind you and, and a calm mill pond sea. So make sure you have music. Um, now another thing that's definitely worth bringing um, if you don't already have this on your boat, keep in mind obviously the things I'm talking about here are based on kind of my experience with the type of boat that I have. If you've got a bigger boat that has, you know, bedrooms, kitchen, or galley, and that kind of stuff, then the, some of the things I'm talking about you may not be as important. But you know, this is the kind of, I guess, I'm a beginner boater. I'm I'm three years into my well, fourth. This is my fourth season. That I'll be starting on the water with a boat myself, my own. So it's kind of aimed at people that are either new to the water or looking to get on the water. My next piece of equipment is going to be a mini fridge. So I have a little 12 volt one which plugs into just your typical 12 volt that you see in your car or in your boot or whatever. I've got one in my glove box on the boat. And most boats, I mean this is a 2006 boat and even my old boat which was slightly older and a bit of a fishing style boat had a, uh, a 12 volt plug. So most have them and you can easily get them installed in your boat if you don't. But I've got a little mini fridge that will plug into that. I only keep it running when my engine's running because I don't want to drain the battery. I don't want to risk doing that, of course. But just to put, you know, your bit of lunch in there, put your some beers or some some, some drinks and whatever, keep them cool. It just makes it really fun. I didn't bring that on the boat, as you can probably tell, because I don't have it in my hands. But definitely a bit of equipment worth investing in. So there we go. I hope you found that useful. If you've now made the decision to get on the water, um, I hope this list of equipment gives you an idea of what you may need to invest in or what you may need to get to get out on the water safely and also have an enjoyable time. Thanks for watching. If you found any of this information useful, it'd be great if you could drop the video a like. Also, if you think there's any equipment I've missed, be sure to let myself and others know in the comments below. But for now, until next time.